Hi, everyone. My name is Ishta Govaya. I am a registered clinical psychologist in Jamaica, and I am trained as a research psychologist. My training is from the United States of America. I live and work between Jamaica and the UK currently, and I do work related to dementia care dementia care improvement, particularly dementia care improvement in and for low and middle income country contexts. And I'm very passionate about care and care equity, about treatment options, about training of the workforce, particularly as is relevant for low and middle income country contexts. And why is that? Because the current and projected burden of Alzheimer's disease is disproportionately in low and middle income country contexts. So it's really important for us to think about innovating as having to center low and middle income country contexts. So the question that I typically ask when I'm involved in projects is what does innovating look like if it's centering these countries, these contexts? where the resource distribution is very inequitable and where the resource distribution both within countries and between low and middle income countries and high income countries is really unequal. And what that means for us when I think about the Caribbean, which is where I'm from, is that practically this means that the innovations have to center these places and spaces. They have to send to us in terms of this vast socioeconomic disparities that exist in our countries. They have to send to us in terms of the lack of universal health care, in terms of the, the disproportionate and unequal resource allocation for health and social care services, the disproportionate concentration of resources in urban contexts and the disproportionate resources um, that, are, that are focused especially on persons who have exposure to education and who are, um, who are aware of what their health status is because they have access and they use that access that they have. So my experiences are also informed by my work as a senior lecturer in epidemiology with the Caribbean Institute for Health Research. And at the Caribbean Institute for Health Research, we do work ranging from population level determinants of health uh, to more lab-based studies in terms of the biology of some of these diseases and the mechanisms of diseases. And some of our work to date has suggested, and I'll share some slides now, that there is an unequal distribution of, um, of diseases in and disease prevalence, um, unequal both in terms of between men and women, also in terms of different age groups, et cetera. So looking at this slide here, you see that in terms of the prevalence of overweight and obesity, that there is a disproportionate um, uh, prevalence of obesity in women, in females. This is women and girls who are 15 and older. This is really startling. And this prevalence of obesity in women is likely one of the drivers of some of our other non-communicable diseases. And this has implications also for the types of, of um, brain degeneration that we see later on that is connected to Alzheimer's disease, but also other types of dementias. And the truth is that we are still, there is still so much that is unknown, but this is one of the specificities that's really important for us to keep in mind when we're thinking about the diversity of ways in which Alzheimer's disease could present and the, fa the factors, the mechanisms, the causal mechanisms that are informing that presentation. We see as well, um, in terms of the prevalence of diabetes, <clears throat> that females are also disproportionately um, subject to diabetes mellitus. So the overall prevalence of diabetes is approximately 12%, but that it's women, girls and women that are driving this prevalence of diabetes. And again, 
this is a factor that can likely have implications for how we're thinking about treatment and how we're thinking about the actual identification of um, Alzheimer's disease and other types of pathologies. Because when um, women are presenting with these illnesses, um, they, are, they are factors that are actually related to the complexity of the, the presentation of Alzheimer's disease later on. And I'll share with you about some of the cases um, that I've been, uh, been privileged to work with in terms of care management consultations. Looking at, at hypertension too, we can see that um, there is a disproportionate prevalence of hypertension as well in, um, it, first of all, in females and then compared to, to men in the country. So women in Jamaica, um, it, this is all Jamaican data, um, have a prevalence of approximately 36% of hypertension. The startling thing with this as well is that it, we see a similarity in terms of the prevalence of, of high cholesterol. And women, again, disproportionately more prevalence of, hyper, of high cholesterol in this group. And this is where the, the challenge comes in as well, because we have a, a, a disparity, not just in the prevalence of these cases and the prevalence of these health issues that are risk factors for later life cognitive impairment, and actually cognitive impairment that we see happening in midlife in many cases in Jamaica and throughout the rest of the Caribbean region and quite likely in other low and middle income country contexts. What we see here though, is that there is a disparity in terms of level of awareness. So while women have higher prevalence of these conditions, these risk factors for later life cognitive impairment, later life cognitive decline. Um, what we're seeing is that they are, however, more aware. And this is probably because they're getting into the healthcare system in, in much greater frequency than the men in our societies are getting into the healthcare system. So we see that the prevalence of, of awareness of hypertension and diabetes is over 60% with um, women, and that it's really much lower with men. We see that with women, again, the prevalence of diabetes, the awareness, prevalence of awareness of diabetes is higher in women than it is among men. Um, and this has implications as well for how we think about, about care management, but also how we think about who is providing care because women are disproportionately in our context, in our societies, they are disproportionately living with risk factors for later life cognitive impairment and are having to navigate this multi-morbid status. And at the same time, they are disproportionately having to manage care needs for other persons in their network. They are very often what we call the sandwich generation where they have to care for persons who are younger than them in their households and they have to care for persons who are older than them in their households. And women, again, disproportionately are in the informal care economy and in the informal workforce in general. So they disproportionately have fewer social care protection plans in place. And then this as well has implications for thinking about treatment and thinking about a care pathway later on. So those are a few key points of data that I wanted to share to give you a sense of what is happening in the Jamaican context and by extension, what is likely happening in other countries of the Caribbean. Um, we really need a lot more research in these areas. And the truth is that um, small island developing states like many of our Caribbean countries are, don't get as much uh, resources channeled in our direction for research. 